Okay, welcome everybody. So today, uh, Alex and I are going to demonstrate how to use Git to share code between two different team members. And uh, we'll also demonstrate how to resolve a conflict when things don't go quite as planned. I guess I'm gonna start by opening a command terminal. So go to applications, systems tools, system tools, select a mate terminal. I need to go to where my Git, uh, where my working directory is. And that for this course is an EC297 work mapper I uh, notice I can just hit tab to actually automatically complete file names and first thing I want to do is I'll do a git status to just make sure everything look, looking good so this basically says uh, I'm up to date okay I'm up to date with origin master which is the remote repository um, I have no changes in my working directory my local files that all looks good uh, just to be sure uh, that I have all the changes from my teammates. I'm going to do a git pull dash r. It says there's nothing to get from the remote repo, so I can start work. So I'm going to start with Visual Studio Code. I want to start it with code dot. I'm starting it from my mapper directory. That's important so that it finds my make file. So code dot started it up. Let me make this bigger. And I've already set up my configuration. So I click on the make file tools here. And I've already said I want to do release configuration. I'm building the mapper, which is my main program, that will also build the libstreetmap library that EC297 exercise uh, connects to. Uh, and when I run something with the debug or the debug icon or the uh, run icon, it's going to run uh, my mapper program. So this is all set up correctly. And uh, let's, let's go ahead and build. So click on the build icon. Everything went well, so that's good. Uh, now, I, Alex and I have been working just on the intersection functions. So three functions that are all tested by the uh, intersection tests in an EC297 exercise. So I want to see how, that, how I'm doing. Uh, so I'm going to basically say I want to run EC297 exercise, but just the uh, tests related to intersections because those are the only ones I've been working on. So I can say anything with a functionality, func inter, I want you to run those tests only. So I do that and let's see how it goes. Uh, and it didn't go super well. There were three test suites and two of them failed. And basically my first failure was in a test uh, that we talked about in a tutorial we wrote the code for it in tutorial three, we debugged it in tutorial four. It's basically the intersection street segments test, which tests this function, find street segments of intersection, uh, and it crashed. All right. Now we fixed this in tutorial four, so I'm not going to go through the fix in detail, but basically our, we're not properly setting up this intersection street segments which is a two-dimensional vector, global variable. We haven't properly set it up. See tutorial four for the details, but basically this code isn't right. Um, I shouldn't have done this. So I wanna get rid of this. Uh, this line of code is just completely pointless. Um, and what I wanna do is create the entire first dimension of the vector with the resize member function. And I wanna basically create one entry for every single intersection. And then the rest of the code here will be fine. Okay, uh, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to build it. And I'm going to run uh, EC297 exercise again. So I'll just use the up arrow to get the same command I had before. So I'm running those intersection tests. And they passed. So that fix worked. That's great. If I go over here and click on this little blue icon, that just shows me what I've changed compared to what is in uh, what's called the staging area of Git. Um, so basically, this is a, like doing a git diff command. It tells me that I have added in this line, this green line, and I deleted these other two lines. So I basically changed a push back to a resize and got rid of a line of dead code. So I can get rid of that diff. And I'm going to go put this I'm happy with this now. I built it. I've tested it. I'm going to put this into my repository uh, and share it with uh, Alex so he can keep working. 
So first I'm going to do a get status. I'd like to see what's going on. And it basically says, I have changes that are not staged for commit. So I've made changes to my file and they're not ready. They haven't been put into git at all. And git's quite helpful. It tells me what to do. So it says I should use git add file if I want to take these changes and get them into my uh, repository. And the file that's been changed is this m1.cpp, which makes sense. That's what I was just changing. So let's do exactly what it tells me to do. I'm going to add in git add this file. So now my changes are um, staged. They're ready to be committed into my local repository. I'll do a git status again. Okay, now it says that I have I have a modified m1.cpp file, but that it's ready to be committed. So let's go ahead and commit it. So I'm going to commit everything that I've staged, which is just one file in this case. I'm going to use the dash m option so I can just specify my commit message uh, on that same command. And I should make this meaningful. So let's say fixed uh, a bug in fine street segments of intersection by uh, loading the entire uh, first dimension of intersection street segments uh, with the resize uh, function. Okay, so I've put a pretty detailed message in. Okay, let's do a status again to see where we stand. Um, it basically says I no longer have any modifications that aren't in my repo, um, at least in my local repo, but it does tell me that my local repo, uh, my branch, is ahead of origin master, which is its name for the remote repository, by one commit. So I've got a commit that my teammates won't be able to see. It's only in my local repository. And git, again, is quite helpful. It says uh, use git push if I want to make this visible to my teammates. I do want to make it visible, so I'm going to do a git push. Uh, and it worked. And just to make sure everything's okay, I'm going to do a git status. And now it says everything is up to date. So I've got nothing more to do. So I can go off and have some lunch and hand it over to let Alex keep working on my group's project. <clears throat> So Alex, why don't you take it away? <clears throat> Thank you so much, Vaughn. Let me share my screen. So thank you so much, Vaughn. So I just came into um, to school. I'm working with Vaughn on this project. And you know, I haven't heard from Vaughn in a little while. He was supposed to work on that function and I'm currently blocked by his function because he was supposed to fix it. And I, I'm gonna do get status quickly it looks like it hasn't been fixed. It looks like my origin master, which is my remote repository, doesn't have any changes from Vaughn. And I tried emailing him, but I think he's out to lunch. So I think I'm gonna fix the problem for him because I think I know the issue. So here's what I'm gonna do. Again, I'm just gonna do git status. Now, normally what you should do is whenever you start working on a repository, you should do a git pull just to get the most recent changes. But let's just say hypothetically, I forgot to do that this time, just for the sake of argument, or I've been working on this for a long enough time and Vaughn did his changes while I was working. But in this case, I forgot to do git pull at the beginning. So here's what I see. And I see the same thing that Vaughn saw. I still have that issue where this isn't the right, right size. However, I didn't watch tutorial four. I think I have a better way of solving this. So as Vaughn mentioned earlier, this intersection street segments is an array of arrays or a vector of vectors, where each element of this vector is an intersection where I want to get a vector of the segment IDs. So when I'm doing this pushback, I'm indexing into an array incorrectly. So what I could do instead as a potential fix is I do the street segment IDs like this, put that here. And what I'm gonna do is instead of pushing back into this 2D array, as we've done before, I'm gonna push back into this temporary vector or temporary array. And then finally, what I'm gonna do is actually do this pushback of the, oops, of the temporary vector that I've created, and I'll push it back to the end. So the idea is that for every intersection, intersection one, I build the vector, then push it back into the 2D vector. 
I build the next intersection, push it in, and so on and so forth. And if I did this correctly, I should get one entry for every single intersection. So what I can actually do is I'm a safe programmer. I'm gonna do some defensive programming. We're gonna teach you this in tutorial five. What I can do is make an assert statement. This will crash if the following isn't true. So what do I wanna verify is always true? Well, intersection street segment should always have the same size as the number of intersections. If this is ever incorrect, then I know I've made a mistake. So this will just check to make sure what I changed is correct. And in the future, if anyone makes any changes, it will make sure that it's also correct. Just like Vaughn, I've set up my configuration to release, my build target to mapper, and my launch target to be mapper as well. So I can build. And that's pretty great. And now, much like Vaughn, I need to run the exercise command. But what I'm gonna do is I have completely forgotten all the different exercisers that I could use. So what I'm gonna do is list testers for milestone one. And now I remember the name. The name is M1 Funk Intersection Tests. So unlike Vaughn, instead of using just par parts of the name, I wanna use the full name just so I can be more precise. Uh, there we go. So I'm gonna run the tester with this name from milestone one. And what we should see, look at that. So it looks like my changes worked. Just like Vaughn's, I solved this in a slightly different way. And notice I actually deleted the lines that Vaughn changed. Hopefully that doesn't cause a problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my Git. So I'm pretty happy with these changes and I'm gonna do Git status quickly. So just like as Vaughn showed, my branch is up to date with the remote master, but we know it's not because Vaughn made his changes. For performance reasons, what Git is doing is that it's not updating our remote master every single time we use it. It's only gonna do it when certain commands are run. But we'll ignore that for a second. It just says that I can just add the file. But before I add, what I personally like to do is just do a quick git diff, just to make sure this is what I want. I want to delete these two lines, yep. I wanna add this line, I wanna swap, change this line, add this line, and add the assert statement. That's pretty great. So I'm still pretty good. So I am now going to add libstreetmap source m1. And you'll notice that I wrote m1.cpp. There's only one file in that entire directory of source with m1.cpp. So when I write tab, it does m1.cpp for me. It saves me on a lot of typing. It's a great thing to do with uh, Linux. So git add, awesome. I'm gonna do git status to see what's going on. So far it says it's pretty good, but all I need to do now is to commit. So now, unlike Vaughn, I'm not gonna use the dash M option because I actually wanna use a text editor to write my git commit messages. I like to add return carriages and make it look pretty. So I find it better to use a text editor. By default, you guys have nano installed, but in this case, I, I use my own text editor, which is Vim. You can also use any text editor you want, but I'm gonna use Vim for this demonstration. I want to quickly write a, um, a very, very clean, detailed um, git commit message. So I like to just add a little bit of header information just so I know what this commit is about. And I'm going to just say that I am going to uh, fix bug in find street segments of intersection. And I'm going to add a little bit of extra because this is not as detailed as it can be. I'm going to say that um, uh, properly pushed um, intersections into a temporary vector and then pushed the temporary vectors into intersection street segments. Just a nice, very detailed description of what I'm doing and more or less why I'm doing it. I wanna fix this bug. So I'm done. I close my text editor to say I finished, I save and close. And now when I do git status, it says again, my branch is ahead of remote master by one commit. And if I do git log, I can see my change, but again, this is not the change that Vaughn just showed you. That's because it hasn't updated yet. So 
what should I do next? Well, according to Git, it says all I got to do is push. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Git push. Uh, very scary, scary red text is always scary, but Git is very verbose and will tell you exactly what's wrong. It says that this was rejected. So it didn't push anything. So I didn't break my remote repository. So that's good news. It's saying error, failed to push some refs. Updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. It's saying that Vaughn made changes on the remote and I made changes on master. And now I'm trying to push it and it's conflicting. So this is caused by pushing another repository and to pushing to the same ref. And what it says is that we first need to increment, integrate the remote changes by using git pull. But they also say that you can also use a fetch. So that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> git fetch is a command that says there's a remote origin master, and then there is my remote origin master. And what I want to do is consolidate them. I want to update my remote origin master. So now, normally with git fetch, if there was nothing to fetch, this would be empty. But as we can see, it actually did something. It was unpacking, and now it's applying some commit. Now when I do git status, <clears throat> what we see here is that I'm on origin master, but I have diverged. You have one and one different commits each. What that means is that Vaughn's origin master or the real origin master moved up by one commit and my version of master moved up by one commit. So that's the problem. I've had, I have a little bit of a, of a split or fork in the road. And now I need to tell Git, how do I want to consolidate this change? There's a couple different ways of consolidating this change, which we'll mention towards the end of this demo. But in reality, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use git pull dash r, or I'm going to pull in Vaughn's changes with a rebase. OK, more scary text. But again, git is telling us exactly what's wrong. Normally with git, when you do git pull dash r, and your teammate makes a change on one file and you make a change on another file and they're completely independent, Git will do the merge itself completely for you, no issue whatsoever. That's what the auto merging here is saying. But as it was auto merging, Git ran into a conflict. Git is not currently powered by AI right now. So it just, if it runs into any issues whatsoever, it says, I have a conflict, fix it. So now it has to call us humans to come in and fix it. So it says there's a merge conflict in this file, which is m1.cpp, which makes sense. It's the only file I modified. And it says that it couldn't apply my commit and I need to resolve all commits conflicts manually. And I need to mark them as resolved with git add and then run git rebase continue. If you look into our uh, git quick start guide, you'll see that we go through these steps in detail. But as you can see, git is literally telling us what we need to do. And we're not, and so yeah. So if you ever get confused or lost, you can just run git status. And again, it will repeat what's going wrong. We're in the process of a rebase and it's saying that it's trying to do this commit. And it says that there are still some, some unmerged paths. There's still some conflicts. Now, you can resolve conflicts in any text editor you want. You can do this from the text editor found in under applications. I'm gonna quickly show you what this looks like in a text editor. So I'm gonna run this in Vim quickly, which is my text editor of choice here. And I wanna show you what does these conflicts look like. Git denotes conflicts using less than symbols, greater than symbols, and equal signs. What this means is that this is the change that Vaughn made, and this is the change that I made, and this is the point that Git is super confused and doesn't know what's going on. What it's saying is Vaughn made a change right here. He made it so it's resize, and I deleted that line. So Git doesn't know whether it should keep the line deleting it, which is what I did, or if it should do what Vaughn did. So that's our issue. And I should have paid attention. I should have pulled Vaughn's changes so it would have, I would have already known it was fixed, but now I have to deal with this merge conflict. Now, I could fix it right here. To fix this using any text editor, you can actually just delete the lines and now it's fixed. But instead what I wanna do is I wanna show you how VS Code can make this a little bit easier. In Visual Studio Code, it gives you a little bit of a graphical user interface to tell you how to fix this issue. 
So what it does is in green is one of the changes and in blue would be the other change. The current change is what is currently in origin master, what's currently in the remote repository. And it says Vaughn's change of resizes there. And what is incoming, which is shown in blue, is my changes. Incoming is a deletion. Now, I think Vaughn is right because, you know, now I watch tutorial four and now I realize, oh yeah, that's how we're supposed to fix it. So I'm actually going to accept the current change. As you can see, it deleted those lines for me. When I hit save and go back to my text editor, I'll notice that exactly those lines have disappeared. So great, no more conflicts. I'm all set to go. I am going to just continue with the rebase. But then I pause for a moment because you probably shouldn't just trust that Git did everything perfectly. And I don't know if this actually works. I better build and run this just to be safe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build this. No build errors, so that's good news so far. And then I'm gonna run EC297 exercise again. And let's see what happens. Huh, it didn't work. This is exactly why you should always build before you add anything or do any commits. So you know that your code is in a good state. What it's saying is that there's an assertion failure. It says that that assertion that I added failed. Or in other words, intersection street segments dot size is not equal to the number of intersections. And this should make sense if we walk through the code a little bit. It says that, so Vaughn's line of code resized the vector to num intersections, and then my code pushed back into intersection street segments for every intersection. So in reality, what's happening here is I'm actually making this two times larger and I'm adding everything to the end. And, and I have this big empty blank space. And what's even worse is that this won't even work because I, I'm not initializing those values at the beginning of the vector. So in reality, I made a horrible mistake. Vaughn's solution was correct. And all I've done is made it much worse. Luckily for us, Git kind of gives us these colorful indications of what I changed. And I can see that, okay, I added this line, but I think Vaughn's change was correct. So I'm gonna delete that. Vaughn's change, he had it so that we're gonna push back into the intersection like this. And then I don't need to do this pushback anymore. So in essence, my commit has changed. Before I was fixing the bug, but now Vaughn fixed the bug. So in reality, the only thing that I changed was that I added this one assert here. So I have to keep that in mind when I'm writing my git commit message. So now when I hit make, no build errors, that's always great. And then when I run the exerciser, passes. So therefore I have resolved the conflict. I have made it so Git now knows which change it should take. It should have taken Vaughn's. And I fixed my code so that my changes are no longer causing an issue, which means that we're passing our tests again. So now let's go back to Git status. Whenever you're confused on what to do next, just type Git status and Git will tell you what we need to do. It says our, we have a rebase in progress. We need to add this file to, to tell Git, hey, we have finished with our rebase conflict. So I'm going to git add lib street map. Again, I can use tab to fix to quickly autocomplete. So if you ever see it jump like that, it means I hit the tab key. Amazing. Now I don't know what to do. Well, git status again. It says you're currently rebasing the branch. I have made these changes. Now all I have to do is git rebase continue. Tell git that I have resolved the issue and that it can continue the rebase as normal. Now what happened here? Because I've resolved the commit by changing some code, I need to update my commit message because maybe the what I actually meant to do changed. And this is correct. What I did was I'm no longer fixing the bug. That's what Vaughn did. I'm now just saying I'm adding a um, an assert to find street segment of intersections. And there's nothing wrong with admitting your mistakes. So I'm gonna write, um, try to resolve bug, but Vaughn beat me to it. <laughs> and fixed a rebase conflict. Added an assert 
to ensure that the vector that I should be more specific intersection street segments is the correct size. And what I'm gonna do is just delete the old message because it's no longer correct. So this is my new message. Now, when I do get status, it says I am ahead of origin master, my remote master by one commit. And when I do get log, what I see here is now I see Vaughn's commit followed by mine. More specifically, I can show this visually using the git k command. This will open up a visual editor, which will show my entire git commit history. And what I can see is here's Vaughn's commit and here's my commit. Now, what happened before was that we had two commits that happened at the exact same time. And now it looks like Vaughn's commit happened first. That is what git pull dash r or git pull with rebase does. It pretends like Vaughn's commit came first and my commit is being applied on top of it. If you were to use git pull, which is git pull without rebase or with a merge, the history won't look as nice as this. See, in this case, what we have is a nice linear history where at any point in time, we know which commit came first. There's no two commits happening at the same time. Git merge allows multiple commits to happen at the same time, so long as you add another commit to join them back together. So if your history looks kind of crazy with a lot of things called branches, that's caused by a lot of merges. And in this case, nice clear history, nice clear linear history is caused by a lot of rebases. So I've finished my finishing, I finished correcting the conflict. Git is telling me that I need to push. So I am going to push. And everything is good. So now I want to hand it back to Vaughn so he can show you that yes, this my changes came back to him and had no effect on his code. Great, thanks, uh, thanks, Alex. And you should see my screen again. So if over here I do a git status, again, git status always talks just to your uh, local repo. So it says that I'm on branch master and I'm up to date with origin master, the remote repository, but I actually know I'm not quite up to date with that remote repo because I just saw Alex push to it. So I should do a pull or I could do a fetch pull is basically a convenience command that does uh, a fetch to bring the changes from the repo into my local repo. And then if I do pull dash R, it does a rebase to bring any changes into my working files, the files I'm actually working on. So I'm going to do a git pull dash R. I'm not going to bother with a fetch. Um, I could do a fetch, but it, I don't need to. The pull dash R does everything for me. I can see it did something, right? So it uh, brought down some changes. I want to see what they are, so I can do a git log, and git log shows me the commit message that Alex just uh, just entered. Um, so if I wanted to see uh, more, I could see it visually using the git gay command, which Alex also just demonstrated, and I can see basically my master branch, which is in my local repo, is pointing at the same commit as the uh, remote repo that is origin master um, and that commit is the last commit that was just made by Alex so I can see he made that commit and I can actually see what it is that commit basically just added this assert statement if I want to I can go back and look at other commits like here's the commit that I made a little earlier so you can see that one was made by me and here's what's in it so that can be uh, a useful way to browse your repo uh, and that's it so this shows you how to share changes with your teammates and if you get a conflict, how to resolve it. So that's it for today. Thanks very much.